Well, that's how you lose your money. Just because some guy or gal on the internet says it's a great deal doesn't mean it's a great deal. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello, welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me, as always, on these Wednesdays, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you, Todd? I'm doing excellent. Uh, man, Matt, this morning was the most irritating morning I've like ever had. I should have scheduled, I should have told them we need to reschedule at like, I don't know, a different time because I don't like starting my mornings off like this. And I knew it was going to be, well, part of it is probably I set myself up for uh, an irritating morning because I, I just told myself this was going to be irritating, but the city of Cincinnati, uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have maybe mentioned the city name, but the city <laughs> of a property I used to own um, has some violations and they have drugged me into it. I used to own this property. I don't own it anymore. And we have, but for some reason, they never changed their files, even though the county changed it, even though all, all records show. So we sent them all the evidence showing that this is no longer, you know, here's the, here's the owner. You know, sent them the county records, sent them the, the closing records, all that. And they still said, nope, sorry, you're going to have to have a hearing. So I had to show up to a hearing today and it was about uh, some code violation issues and it got to my turn and I'm like, look, stop bothering me. <laughs> I was just irritated by the whole thing. Uh, it was, it was the most, and the, the lady who was running it kept on interrupting me and I was just so irritated with, and I'm like, I just, I, I do not like it when people interrupt other people. And I try really hard not to interrupt people. And I do it on occasion, certainly. But she continually interrupted on uh, me, interrupted me, interrupted me. Finally, I just blew up at her. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, you need to shut your mouth now. <laughs> like, no more. <laughs> I can't stand it. So, Did you get the message across at least? Uh, she stopped talking, yeah. <laughs> Are they going to stop bothering you about these violations? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I had to go. Of course, it's the city. And so the meeting starts at 8.30 a.m., Yet they didn't show up until about 8 45 a.m. Mm. And they didn't officially start the meeting until about about 8 50. So by the time it got to me, I was I literally was late to my next meeting that was starting at nine o'clock. And so I had to quickly tell what I needed to tell, which was pretty much nothing. Like, look, I showed you, I sent you all the legal documents, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. And I'm like, I, I have nothing more to, to say. And so, so yeah, it was, um, I ended up being late to my second meeting because they were so tardy and I did tell them that I said, look, I've got to go. I'm sorry, but you guys just weren't respectful and didn't show up to the meeting on time. So we could have had this done already, but you know, it just didn't happen. So anyways, that's my rant for today, Matt. Uh, that's how it goes, but I'm good now. I had, I got to my second meeting. It went well. Oh, good. Now I'm talking to you. Of course, man, life is really good now. You're wearing a beautiful <laughs> red shirt. I see your shiny bald head. I mean, man, that's great. So <laughs> oh, fantastic. I'm glad I could make your day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. So what? Anyways, I'm sure the listeners are like, I don't want to listen to this guy rave, rant and raving anymore. So what are we talking about today, Matt? Well, you know, one question people have is is about diversification of their assets. Like how much is too much? You know, you yeah. want to have a little bit, you know, if you put all, like all your money in, into one basket, you know, then then maybe all the eggs are going to break, you know, if things go south. Uh, so mm -hmm. you want to have some diversification at, at least, but if you spread yourself too thin, you know, you're not going to uh, get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's two, there's two, I think, very big distinctions here. Um, all your eggs in one basket or spreading your eggs out, right? So it depends. And when I say it depends, it depends on who you are and what you're trying to achieve. So if you are a business owner, right, you need to put all your eggs in one basket. You need to, you need to be fully focused on whatever asset 
you're building, which is your business, right? And so for me, I'm not very well diversified. I am real estate, very real estate heavy, very, very real estate heavy. I I have started a little bit to diversify, but I'm still you know, really top heavy with real estate, but this is my focus, right? This is, I'm trying to achieve greatness. And so if I'm trying to achieve greatness, I can't be wishy-washy about it. I can't be throwing money into this and that and the other. I have to be all in. And so I'm extremely focused. This is what I know. This is what I feel like I do very well. And so I'm all in. And, and by the way, I'm telling other investors to invest with me. I'm saying, Hey, I've got this asset invest with me. If I'm putting my money elsewhere, doesn't that confuse people? Doesn't that confuse the message? Why am I not fully committed to it? I am 100% committed to it. And quite frankly, most of the properties, not all of the properties I put in, I wish I could put in more. I just don't have more I can put in at the time. So if you're like me, diversification, in my opinion, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I proved myself wrong, but in my opinion, diversification is not a great thing. You should be very focused on building your business on that growth. And maybe when I retire someday, when I'm 110 years old and I retire, then I'll diversify, right? But Right now, it's 100% focused on building my business, which is, in my opinion, the most valuable investment I can make. Well, I got to disagree with you on one thing with your diversification. You know, you you are diversified within real estate because you have different types of assets in different markets. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. so it's not like you put it all into one particular property in one particular submarket. You know, it's yeah. spread across. And so, so that's true. And here's where I will say, well, it's true, but not true. I, my focus on real estate. And so this is where I differ from some people, but my focus on real estate is not necessarily multifamily real estate or self storage or whatever. My focus is value add real estate. So I'm looking for value add real estate in an excellent location with a great story of how we can improve the net operating income of that location and how we can strategically align ourselves with the right team, the right group, the right partners um, to achieve those goals. And so I do have diversification. I'm very multifamily heavy. Okay. Cause that's an asset that I'm extremely comfortable and confident with. Um, we've got great teams in place. We've got great markets that we really like. So I'm very multifamily heavy, but I also, uh, really like senior housing, right. And, and I've talked about senior housing on this podcast plenty of times before. And so we've got a good portfolio of senior housing. Um, I also like other asset classes. Um, you know, we just purchased a retail, uh, shopping center. Well, why? Because it's real estate, it's value add, it's in an excellent location, and we've got a great team. Okay. We've got an industrial building, same thing. So, why would we diversify when I just said don't diversify? Well, we're not really diversifying. We're still following what our business plan says we should follow. We're still doing what we say we're supposed to be doing. We're in a few different types of real estate, but it's still real estate. So yes, I'm diversifying, Matt, but no, I'm not diversifying. So yeah, yes and no. That's fair. I mean, I, I do see that uh, while, while you're doing a business, you know, you, you absolutely want to be laser focused in making that succeed. Because if you're also day trading on the side and looking at real estate deals and, and, and uh, you know, other things, like it's taking you away from uh, making your business to be successful. Yep. At, at the same time, if you're just a passive investor, uh, yeah. you know, I, then I think it's a good idea to do a little more diversification. So that's where I say it's it's okay, and 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 but I think you also need to be careful too. I don't think you should diversify too much, even as a passive investor, because here's what I think: is a, a successful passive investor needs to be active, and by I know that's like an oxymoron, right? But but. They really do, because if you want to be successful at 
investing, you need to understand what you're investing in. And so if you're going to passively invest in real estate, understand real estate, understand the dynamics of the asset you're investing in, understand the ebbs and flows of it, understand how interest rates play into the factor, understand how, um, you know, how, how that specific market plays into the success of the real estate, understand that all over, you know, overarching just fundamentals of that specific asset class, right? Same thing if you're going to be diversifying into stocks. You know, look, if I, am I going to buy oil stocks when I know zero th- about the oil industry, energy stocks, when I know nothing about what's going on there? Somebody, some just guy on the internet tells me to go buy this penny stock. And I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. I'll buy this stock that I can buy for you know, 23 cents and I'm going to go buy a ton of shares of that and we'll see what happens. Well, that's how you lose your money. Just because some guy or gal on the internet says it's a great deal doesn't mean it's a great deal. Do you understand the business? Are you getting to know it? My worst investments, when I look at my stock portfolio, my worst investments, 100%, by the way, man, 100% are something I've taken from the internet, some, some guy I read and they're like, these are the top three stocks to buy or whatever for 20, 2020, buy these stocks and you know, you'll get rich. Maybe it wasn't quite that abrupt, but still buy these stocks. These are going to do well. And I'm like, oh, ching, ching, ching. I'm going to buy those stocks. And guess what happens? hundred percent of the time, hundred percent, they lose value every time. And it's because I didn't do my research. I didn't learn and I didn't understand what I was investing in. I just invested because some dude on the internet told me to invest. And the ones that I've done well are the ones that I go, this is why I'm investing in it. So like I've got, I bought Exxon Mobil whales at like $30 a share. And I did research and I understood why it would likely go up. You know, I think that was fairly obvious, but at the same time, I did my research and understood. And you know, now it's sitting at whatever it is, 110 or whatever it is today. And that worked, but, but it's because I understood it and I got to know it. And I didn't spend a boatload of time on it because that's not my thing, but I did at least spend some time learning it. So I think as a passive investor, you should get to know what you're investing in, spend the time research it, learn it, have advisors that can help you, but don't just trust them knee jerk, right? Understand what advice they're giving you, research it yourself, decide for yourself and go, okay, now I'm moving forward. You're going to be a lot better. You're going to, you're going to do a lot more. You're going to be a lot more successful doing that. So even with passive investing, Matt, I would say diversify but don't go crazy. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I would say also if you're a passive investor and wanting to do stocks, but don't have the time or interest to research into the specific stocks, uh, then perhaps an index fund might be a a good option because then it just tracks along with the market. Sure. But again, do some research on the index funds and Mm -hmm. what, you know, which, which ones are best. And yeah, it's funny. The, um, the, whatever, traditional assets, right? The, the, all these financial advisors are diversified, diversified, diversified. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Yet when you go, hey, I'm going to buy some real estate, they go, boom, don't buy real estate. <laughs> Keep it in there. Well, wait a second. You told me to diversify. I thought you said diversify. No, 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 but not that far. Not that far. <laughs> don't go that far. So they, they kind of uh, combat themselves a bit. But um, but I, I actually, I, I Again, I think that diversification, although great, just needs to be done with a lot of um, a lot of thought, a lot of forethought, and a lot of research. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, the research is important, even if uh, you're passively invested into real estate, because you want to make sure you're invested with a good sponsor, you know, somebody who knows what they're doing to execute the business plan well. And here's here's what I'll say about investing, and one of the things that irritates me the most is that people will invest in the the stock market through a financial advisor, and then they get irritated when they lose their money. Whose fault is that? It's your own fault. 
you blindly trusted somebody. Now, I'm not trying to slam financial advisors because there's some very good ones. But again, it's about the research that you're doing. And it's about the communication that you're having with those financial advisors. You, you don't you don't just give your money to a financial advisor blindly and expect them to make all the decisions for you. You are you, how involved are you in that in those decisions? How much research are you doing? How much how much are you communicating with them? And did you even research that financial advisor to find out what their track record is? What are they investing in? What are they doing? You know, so I, I think there's some great financial advisors out there. I have some friends that are financial advisors and I think they're excellent. They actually will tell people to invest in real estate or encourage them to invest in real estate. They got to be careful because they have a license and they they can't advise outside of what they can sell. But, you know, they're not the ones saying, well, no, don't, don't think about that. Don't even do it. You know, they're, they take a, a different approach to it. So those are good people, but did you do the research? Did you communicate properly? It's your own fault if you give your money blindly to a financial advisor and then it and then it goes away. That's your fault. Oh yeah, if you just walk into a random financial advisor, and so many people store, do it, though, then like you don't know. There could be somebody on their first day who doesn't know what they're doing. My <laughs> uncle referred this guy to me. It could be somebody mad. It could be somebody on their you know their thirtieth year that doesn't know what they're doing. You know, there's some financial advisors that are just bad. It's just how it is. It's just like any industry. I mean, there, there's guys and gals that just have no clue what they're doing. They're salespeople. They don't, they don't invest in what they sell. They don't, they don't believe in what they sell, but they're out there doing it. And they're gonna, they're just making bad decisions. And you're investing blindly with them. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Completely fair. Uh, so how much money would you put into uh, the lottery? You, you know, cause you might win a couple of billion dollars. You never know. Yeah. I, every about five years, I will put about two to $6 in a Powerball ticket. Every about five years. I haven't won yet, which is surprising. Oh, I, well. I, so one of my friends uh, sent me a text the other day, something about we're like getting a group of people together buy Powerball tickets. And I was like, whatever, I could do that. Finally, I'm like, whatever. So I, I sent them a text back. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll buy a couple. So I went in the group and <sighs> surprise, surprise, we didn't win. I thought for sure we would, we would win. And, you know, we were going to have the, the unfortunate thing though, Matt, was I was going to have to split it. So I think I was only going to be getting like $190 million or something like that. Oh. I was like, oh, really, is it worth it? But, you know, I went for it and, uh, <laughs> Shockingly, I didn't get it. But next time, next, next time, next time, you know, five years from now, maybe you'll you'll get a winning five game. five to seven years from now. Uh, you know, when I buy one, I'll get it. The last time I bought one, I was I don't know some big record amount, and it was my I think it was like right right at my wife's birthday, right before my wife's birthday. So I bought her a Powerball ticket, and I thought she was for sure going to win it. Oh, oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, obviously. I, I'm okay with people spending some money on a Powerball or going to the casino and having some fun, but you just you just got to know what you're doing. You just got to yeah. understand, like you're losing your money. Yeah, I mean it's going away. So if you look at it as entertainment and go, you know, I'm going to buy a Powerball ticket here and there, fine. But if you there's there's a lot of people that are going to do it, like like hoping they're winning, praying that they're going to win, like they're betting on winning, and they're they're damaging their financial uh, future because of their addiction to gambling and that that's obviously a problem you know yeah and i i saw that uh, the poorest americans spend the higher percentage of their income uh on lottery <laughs> tickets than any other well group. yeah i mean you know. right yeah and, and it's just crazy because because most people that are multi-millionaires you know sure if you give them an extra two billion dollars they'd be okay with it but they're not gonna they're not going out there trying to win a powerball yeah they don't they don't need it yeah, that's fair. So, all right, cool, man. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, back to the diversifying. You know, you got to do what works for you. But for me, it, it's focus, 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 and and what you focus on, what your energy focuses on, that's what flows, man. I mean, if you want to have success 
in your investing, focus on it and focus on whatever you, here's the thing, Matt, you can make money investing in a lot of different assets. It's not just real estate. It's not just oil stocks. It's not just tech stocks. It's not just you know, precious metals. It's, there's a ton of things. But I think if you try to become an expert in all of those or try to do all of it, you're not going to have the results that you would like. If you can focus just on real estate or just on your own business, whatever that might be, or just on tech, you're going to do a lot better because you're going to start to see you're going to start to see patterns. You're going to start to see nuances. You're going to start to see opportunity and smell opportunity. That's the biggest difference, right? Is when you diversify, you don't see patterns and you don't see opportunities and you don't see trends and you don't, you can't see those, those things that are either coming or potential deals that are, are great. And so you might stumble upon something here and there and think you're you're really good at investing, but not really. You did you just got lucky. If you want consistency over and over and over again, you have to focus and you that is the only way to start spotting those trends. That's the only way to start spotting those opportunities, sniffing those out and going, I know I have to put my money into this particular investment, whether it's passive or active, because of these five factors. And that's what's happening. And that's what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, instead of making five to 8% on your money, that deal, you end up making 40, 50, 60% on your money or, or even greater because you were able to smell the opportunity because you've looked at so many other deals and you've invested in so many other deals in that particular asset class that it was easy for you to sniff it out. Awesome. That's great advice. So cool, man. That's all I got. That's all I got as well. All right. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day Saturday. Thanks to you as well. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, Give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. Your rating review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also, look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out, and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.